Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so my name is uh, Michael Oliver. I'm a student at the Mime School in Amsterdam. Where I study physical theatre. And this is Patricia Bardi, who is a dance voice artist, improvisational performer, choreographer, and also a bodywork specialist. So I'm I'm coming to this moment now with Patricia because I wanted to ask her some questions about the body and its role in performance and specifically how the body is also trained to arrive at that moment of performance. And I became really curious to ask these specific questions after a class in, in school, a theater theory class, where we were looking at Meyerhold's Biomechanica and looking at the role of the body in performance, and especially how the body's trained. And I was struck by the thought that all of these training methods that I was watching, not just Meyerhold, but also the Meme Corporel by Etienne de Cru, which we study a lot at the Mime School, were developed by people who were watching the body from the outside. And I'm also so also a student of you, Patricia, and I've been a student now for about a year and a half, and I've witnessed your work and what its, its approach. And so I thought it would be very helpful for the class that I'm in at the Mime School, and also for others who I think who are interested in physical theater, or interested in the body and as a performing kind of vehicle of expression. Um, to understand a bit how you approach the, uh, this idea of what the body is, how to train it, and how that relates to your performance practice. So, you have, so, to the, introduce you a bit more. You are uh, living in Amsterdam, but you were born in New York. <laughs> and you, um, for 21, 22 years, have been teaching the foundation course, the VMI. The the VMI somatic practice um, here in Amsterdam. This this coming year will be the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth year, okay, <laughs> of teaching what you call the VMI somatic practice, which combines. So that's much. It's basically, as long as I've been alive. <laughs> yes. Um, you could have come to the baby class. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and so this it combines vocal dance, voice movement integration, and vital movement, integration, body work. And I think for the purposes of this interview, um, we'll just focus on the vocal dance and the practices that you develop to kind of arrive yeah. with your, to your performance practice. Right. So if we could, if you could talk a little bit and just introduce us briefly to what is vocal dance for you. Yeah. And yeah what your performance practice right, right. is. Um, well, just, you know, from my own perspective, I, uh, my own training and background is in dance yeah. and movement. And, you know, the word uh, somatic movement has something that even in the native English-speaking yeah. world still is not clear in its um, c context. Mm -hmm. So you have even English speakers saying, what's somatics? Yeah. Um, so for a long time I, I didn't even call it that. All I knew was that as learning to dance, I, and not starting as a young child, I had an insight or a motivation that perhaps if I knew more from, from the inside I could learn faster. And um, because I didn't have the 10 years of a, a child's imitation of form, yeah. Um, so, um, so uh, wanting to know more about the inside of the body and how the body is functioning was very fundamental to uh, my learning to dance. Um, of course, I did all of the normal kind of like learning uh, tools and you know um, for uh, learning, you know, just the forms of dance. Because your contemporaries that you were dancing with often had had, right from their get-go, a whole ballet training, a whole like yeah. right form that they were Absolutely. Yeah, that, that their did. entire body yeah. developed around yeah. and with, and you know, and no, 
many colleagues of, with that training who have you know a tremendous technique um, that comes out of that kind of um, early work, um, mostly because of who they are and that they continue to pursue this passion and love, but not to go too far out of the realm. Um, so um, I, in being a, one of the founding members of School for Body Mind Centering, this was a vehicle for me th that went along with the same time that I was learning to dance. So the whole how I'm learning to dance was already innocently getting influenced by this notion that if I knew from the inside I'd learn faster, that was my idea, yeah. faster. And faster was never, that never happened. <laughs> you can't, you can't make the body learn faster. I mean, you might, you know, have more rigorous practice, you might practice eight hours a day, but at a certain point, the body's relationship to learning has its own pace of integration. Um, so, um, within uh, looking at this internal process, I got very interested in the organs as, you know, because this was a, a whole new world that never got talked about in terms of dance training, it wasn't included in dance forms, and, you know, for good reason, our whole functional motor function is skeletal muscle. Um, but by uh, going underneath that, and I started using uh, sound to stimulate inner presence, to stimulate, and um, by inner presence, you're meaning the feeling of being inside the body, specifically also with being in touch with the organs. Yes, but through the vehicle of researching the organs, yeah. knowing that you know there was a whole um, vitality in yeah. there that was keeping me alive, yeah. um, and then allowing sound and the physical presence of sound through resonance yeah. in in the body, I I had a vehicle for. Um, to, to begin to bring another level of sensation into my awareness in my expression. So, um, I, so I was a typical dancer and that was like, you know, you were silent. You were just silent and I can remember being in a class where someone had us make a sound and I was like, oh wow, you yeah. know, this was like so left out. So those things happen all at the same initial sort of like opening up formative years yeah. um, of realizing that the voice was a physical instrument. And wait a minute, you know, this is arbitrary that dancers don't use their voice and that singers don't move. You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's just that, yes, it was just and and the you know, the academies of training and the specializations, which you know I understand are necessary for people to develop yeah. in, in line with um, the mediums that they're using. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, um, I, I didn't really look at musical theater. That was well, well out of my realm of seeing people doing song and dance. Yeah. And I'm going like that because it never, it never appealed to me and that yeah. wasn't really what I was looking for. I was looking for the inclusion of sound as a physical presence. Yeah. What happened from the inclusion of sound as a physical presence is that my voice developed. And I just had a colleague friend who said to me, because I made some organ dances, yeah. um, and <laughs> I always like to say, well, you know, people expected I was going to wheel out an organ. <laughs> you know? And, you know, they were so kind of wild and, and, and intuitive yeah. and full of discovery. Um, and I just had a friend who said, why don't you sing out loud? Which, <laughs> which you know, yeah. I, I, I didn't even know I wasn't singing out loud. Or it just, I'm saying that was very pivotal. Why don't you sing out loud? <laughs> so so that, that you're already <laughs> singing on the inside. And yes, really yes, and, yes, and it was, I, I, don't, I don't know from the outside what, uh, I don't, I can't really say what I was doing on the outside, I just knew what I was doing on the inside. So it was a great piece of feedback. Yeah. Um, and I would just, so this, so the early work with voice was just so explorative and very innocent. Um, and it just, 
you know, I at first called it a physical voice. What did I call it? I don't know. I don't know. Vocal dance and physical sound. No, I, 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 I can't remember now. Physical, I know there was physical sound. And then after a while I just, I thought, oh, but this is vocal dance, you know. Yeah. This was a good description. I mean, I've always tried to use descriptive words mm -hmm. to, um, to identify um, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't like I'm going to make vocal dance. It was this evolution of um, a, a perce perception of sound becoming a physical instrument. Yeah. And then all my explorations um, around using sound and movement in dance, mm -hmm. because I was then making lots of um, yeah. uh, research into and then performing yeah. pieces was it was really, when I put sound into the equation and yeah. used my voice while dancing, it had a profound effect on my relationship between attention and intention. Right. And, you know, I, I don't know, for me anyway, or you can see the people, you know, you can be moving, you know, you can be cycling, you know, um, and you can be having lots of thoughts while your motor patterns are going on. Yeah. And so for me, that's sort of like the attentive state doesn't have to be there and I can, you know, kind of fulfill through motor memory what needs to be done. Right. Um, so by adding voice, it, it, it vitalized and intensified the, um, the feeling in my movement and it allowed me to really feel far more directly an attentive state that was so much richer in my performance than all, being silent. Yeah. Um, and then of course by adding voice, music and language and therefore a, a kind of look at performance from physical theater, mm -hmm. you know, it could just, there was an evolution, right? There was right. an evolution that was like one, you know, one, one level of understanding to the next. It wasn't, of course, it didn't hatch all at once, but, um, as a dancer, I felt like I was beginning to have a way to have my voice, you know, and not the voice as a, you know, yeah. a singing tool, but my voice as an artist, right? And yeah. to be able to bring in what I'm thinking about and what what's the world around me. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, from, the, from a physical theater, you know, to be able to invent characters and play with them and play yeah. with them in relationships. So it just yeah. spread out. Yeah. But for me, it's still vocal dance yeah. because the body and uh, the flow of movement yeah. are consistently what's getting informed. And, right. you know, if I look at this point in my life, um, if any performing artist, from musician to actor to dancer, it's the body as the instrument, yeah. you know, then yeah. how we choose to express from right. that, of course, is a training, is a sensibility, mm -hmm. is a soul training, you yeah. know, in terms of, yeah. but the body is the core of it. But it's interesting that in this whole arc you're talking about, the place that you've always been very connected to in terms of the body is the, the perception. Yes. Of like, what are you feeling, and, and where, where is the detail in that? Where is the, also the expression of that? Yeah. And that seems to really have defined the whole arc of your moving through this exploration. Yeah. And and thinking of the body as the instrument, it's then interesting that in other training systems, like for me, corporel, it's. The body is the instrument, but it is very much in a particular form that, and the training is needs to replicate that form in your own way. But yeah. there is, it's very precise. Yes. So it's interesting that, also for me, being part of what you've found, how you have found, because you found a way to teach what you this exploration yeah. you've made over these last twenty four years, and I'm only coming in right, right at the very end, <laughs> or like the most recent times. <laughs> but the kinds of training methods that you're using, I find that very interesting to, in comparison with this same schooling education that I'm having now, because yeah. when it's strictly think, speaking about this mean corporal form, or you could think of other physical theater yeah. forms that you must replicate, and 
I was wondering how you how you perceive this relationship between this perception of the body mm -hmm. and discovering things and also the the practice of organizing the body in a particular way yeah. so that you may have these kinds of expanded possibilities in the performance moment that I think these uh, the physical trainings are, are genuinely hoping for. And I, and I mean, obviously, when I say the body, I also really mean the voice, too, in this context, speaking with you. And it's another question that's very interesting, why these theaters also train the body, but then train the voice, but this kind of integration doesn't always happen in this kind of training process. So, speaking about things like the active breath um, kind of method that you've developed, um, and the sort of floor work that you do to integrate the body and the voice together, if you could explore with me how you how you think that that form because there is a particular form of the body that you use mm -hmm. a particular kind of shape relates to the development of the kind of performer mm -hmm. for the performance moment. Yeah. yeah well I think the key is when you use the word practice yeah um, because uh, in, the, in the work that we've been doing in the VMI practice, the word, the, the most essential word is the word practice because I felt in observing uh, what do people need um, to develop themselves as a practitioner, that was very important to me. How, what has, what does a practitioner need? and explore but exploration for me wasn't enough yeah. okay exploration can be a beautiful experience but I wanted people to become practitioners and performers that could draw upon the the detail of their experience with understanding and understanding was both a, a cognitive understanding but it was a perceptual understanding and per per perception is something that is fed by our direct physical experience. So things like active breath and flow work, um, looking at um, different body systems, um, looking at defining very much focuses of, you know, if I'm going to use my voice, um, how am I going to use it as a communication tool? And that's what I feel a performer is. They're, they need to communicate something, but they have to communicate it first to themselves so they know what they're saying, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah they're doing what and they're doing. And what they're doing. And yeah. what they're doing. But also within that doing, they, what's underneath they're doing that's informing the experience for themselves. Right. So it's really important to um, define experience in more detail and what that is is observable states okay. right because you know like you know you can be I don't know in this room and you can say oh yeah it's a white room and you might miss that there's this many uh, windows that right now there's scaffold in front that oh there's an orange tag over there so you know we can say yeah I'm in this room or I'm in this room and there's so much detail that can start to inform how I experience this room. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and now I'm sitting, yeah. you know, we're sitting very yeah. closely here, and how am I experiencing you? Yeah. And what does it mean to perceive you in this space with me? So all of these are layers, mm -hmm. layers of perception that rather than, ooh, multi-focused, you know, yeah. I, can't, I can't, it's too confusing. It's only confusing if I'm not using my perceptions mm -hmm. in a more embodied state. And it's kind of layers in your own, if, but from what I understand, it's different layers, maybe it's not layers, or it's points in a field of your mm -hmm. own sense of aliveness to yourself. Yeah. Kind of I, yeah, yeah, I think it is layers of perception. Yeah. Um, but and I also think that there are, you know, uh, in the way, it, you know, because what I need, do need to bring up is that within the expressive realm of what yeah. we've been doing, we also cultivate 
a way to look, a way to use the material that comes from this, uh, these practices of active breath and flow work and um, things that give people a chance to develop their physical feedback and develop their physical skills and breath skills and voice skills. So, you know, in a way it kind of gives people a practice that they can um, enter that is repeating on some level of understanding, on some level of, as you call it, method, um, I call it practice. And at the same time, the revisiting is never just going around to get the form correct. It's spiraling, you know, it's spiraling in a direction to get more detail physically, yeah. to get, it's spiraling to get more detail perceptually, but it's also spiraling up into our perceptions of what that experience is, an internal experience and an external experience. Because once I'm in, in a space expressing, yeah. there's an outside world yeah. that's also informing and communicating. So you can say, oh, well, there's so much. You could say, I always like, I give lots of focuses. Yeah. Um, as, but those are like become tools of taking my perceptions and saying, okay, I have this spectrum of possibilities and, and extended voice focuses as an example. Yeah. And then as an interaction between internal and external, how do I shape my performance material or my, let's say my expressive material to use various um, focuses that help me to make a choice between, well, what am I doing? Oh, you know, trying to kind of just do something to right. something that's getting informed um, in terms of the presence of the experience, yeah. but in the understanding of, of what are the observable states and what are the expressive states that I can call upon. So the more you can yeah. have these tools, and none of the none of the things we're doing, I always say, okay, none of them are written in stone. Yeah. Like you know, it's not the form mm -hmm. that's creating; it's the your relationship to how you are working with the material, right. and then these focuses that all work that are both physical. Mm -hmm. um, for example, yeah. if, maybe it's nice to hear a few examples of what these focuses are. Yeah, okay, so for, for in terms of the, if I, you know. Uh, in terms of extended voice focuses, you know, I might, I might talk about just very simple, rudimentary idea of sound and music making. You know, you know, modulation from fast to strong, um, uh, sparse, you know, one one sound at a time, um, clusters of sound to single sounds, um, intensity, modulation from something that's robust to something that's fine, pitch change. Changing the quality from a violin to a trumpet, yeah. you know. So it, you know, you can. It and gives. That's, and that's also that's in the voice, and then you also have the same focuses with looking at the movement in space. You know that we've looked at with the yeah. the rhythm or changing the time or changing perspective of where you are yeah. or repeating yeah. stillness yes. in movement. Yeah. And then, yeah, we've done a lot with what we call whole body gesture, and mm -hmm. then it, you know, and I've come. The whole body gesture, for, has be, you know, one way to describe it is the, the inner narrative. And right. you know, as a dancer, um, as a background, uh, dancers are more poetic. In, in the, their sense of narrative isn't here's the story. You stay in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then here, you know, you take it through its plot. You know, it has its climax and it yeah. has its resolution. And mm -hmm. you know, and you know, that's a convention that you know, if I go to the movies, I like to. <laughs> At the same time, I like when the narrative becomes more interactive with the present and the past and the future. And so, in a narrative, is an unfolding presence, but it engages the the imagination into the physical feeling states that you're exploring in your whole body gesture. And so that, and so why I say whole body is that you know it's not just the fingers and you know mm -hmm. kind of pointing to something, yeah. but there's a flow through the body, mm -hmm. and there's a memory in that mm -hmm. that you can feel that you can unfold um, the inner narrative because feeling states yeah. and states of awareness are always fluid, yeah. and 
At the same time, we want to use the intelligence of our cortical brains to say, I can track, I can, um, I can perceive, I can continue to dialogue with the information that's coming out in my expression. How am I going to shape it now? So, you know, stillness and extension, or, you know, I love change perspective, you know, like change perspective, or repeat, or contrast, or change the rhythm. All of these, we use them to kind of explore the inner narrative, so it start, you start to engage with your material in a more defined way. You see, and then I feel, well, that more defined way becomes the training for the performer to use a creative process that's related to inner presence and, ex and outer presence as a, you know, and as a way to, to know who am I in this moment. And that, for me, is the deepest communication. As a performer, I always want to... Uh, uh, if I can draw people into the experience I'm having, they also have an experience. Yeah. If they're watching a form, they watch a form. Watching and perceiving are not the same things. Right. And so, I know we have a few yeah. more minutes, yeah. um, unfortunately. But I, so, these last, talking about these focuses, in the kind of improvisational moment, mm. um, are some of the, uh, the tools, very important tools that you've been working on and developing for yeah. the performer, performer and their practice. And also, within that, there's the solo and then there's the ensemble. Yeah. So, um, that, you know, so we've learned a lot about how, how to work with your material, but in an ensemble. So, and it can be very revelatory for people yeah. to understand the difference between what I'm doing to how do I, I like to just call it, serve the image, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, that serving the image has a kind of overview, yeah. and we, you know, to reduce the kind of like observations in an ensemble, mm -hmm. there's physical, spatial, auditory, and time. Right. And these elements are are interacting all the time in an ensemble. I mean, they're also yeah. interacting in a solo, yeah. but you know, I'm looking with people to to be able to take. How can I take a thread from myself, you know, from yeah. this training we're doing, and also be able to uh, empathize with the material on the, that I'm receiving and seeing and observing? Yeah. So you've got a relationship. Um, so I look at it as experiential composition, okay. right? So I, yeah, I, I mean, I think the role of the director or the generator of ideas is a very vital role, but I like to see the performer continue to be thinking and feeling, um, uh, right? Not like, yeah. now I go here and now I go there and this is what we do here. You know, I like, you know, because as human beings, we never repeat ourselves. We're not machines. Yeah. There's always a shaping going on. Mm -hmm. you know, Arriving at the material that you've, you're working with. That working time. with and creating yeah. in the moment. And of course, the, the longer you work with the material, it can deepen in mm -hmm. your experience or calls up more yeah. possibilities. Yeah. yeah. And so these, because I, I want to make also a, a, a to introduce, give space for you to introduce also some more and more detail of the active breath and the flow work and that their relationship also to the performance, performers kind of training and practice because what we're, we're speaking about now is sort of the the arrival of the body in the, in, in the person in the space also potentially with others and they were working with their inner material, their inner narrative and having different mm -hmm. possibilities to really go deeply into that to continue meeting yourself and mm -hmm. meeting yeah. what is happening. Yeah. But in, in terms of things that you've also developed mm -hmm. that which are kind of, I've heard you say that it's been kind of related to a natural or your own developed qigong practice, I mean, unique, ah. that you've developed yourself, yeah. this active breath, yeah. these, these movement tools to yeah. open the body, to yeah. open presence, and have yeah. different kinds of materials. Oh, it was my friend Barbara who said that, because I, I only knew about it. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, don't know, so, yeah. 
I didn't know, so I didn't, you know, <laughs> why I have to say that is because I'm very happy when something that you de develop over time, like active breath, right. then connects to some ancient system. Yeah. I think, wow, we're on the right path. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. because, yeah, then when you have, when you meet something like a Qigong, right. someone who's, you know, worked with Qigong for 30 years, you know, it says, oh, this relates to it, you know, yeah. I, I think, Instead of going, oh no, this is active birth. It's, it's all, it, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, contextualize into a, a larger mm -hmm. yeah. um, canon of you know of practices that mm -hmm. human beings have been doing. Right. It gives it more strength. Yeah, gives it more strength. Yeah. And so, what would you say is active breath then, as a as a practice? Yeah. Um, well, uh, okay. As a, as a practice, it evolved over time from like, how do you start a class? <laughs> How do you, what do you give to people, you know, that we can enter some realm of working together? Um, and that's not like form oriented, you know, to get, but is preparing the body to receive and allowing the body and the rhythms in the body to start to be felt. Um, and that breath is, is the bridge between voice and body, or voice and movement. Um, and breath is also the, the tool for beginning to dialogue with sensation and feeling in the body. Um, where, you know, we all know this, that if we get nervous about something or, you know, or the, you know, yeah, the, you know, the breath just yeah. gets very limited. So, so to create um, a physical practice that uh, starts kind of slow enough that people can start to settle into um, perceiving into their body, yeah. but has enough kind of repetition of pattern that they can keep in a fresh way coming back to the pattern to see how is my body relating to this today, mm -hmm. right? So it, not to be corrective, but to be interactive. Right. Um, and then it goes from simple and small and and uh, slow, and it builds up. So, and it also looks at breath as circulation. And you know, I, I talk a lot about um, you know the heart and the lungs are completely intimately involved. I mean, the 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 circulation brings the blood back to one side of the heart, at which point it crosses through the lungs before it goes to the other side of the heart and goes out to the body. So every breath is involved with the heart and every heartbeat is yeah. involved with the breath so it is a circulation the in, lungs themselves hold the heart I mean, they, embrace it. they embrace yeah. it though, if you look at the physical shape of the organ right. right and you know the thoracic diaphragm is right underneath the heart so the heart movement is yeah. working with not only the pulsation of the lungs but also the thoracic diaphragm so suddenly you know Breath is not just muscle and bone, but breath is circulation. Um, it's circulation of blood. It's both a, an external functional breath and it's an internal whole body breath that is uh, enriching the blood, which is feeding every cell in the body. So it wakes us up. You know, and also the, uh, the oxygen to the brain is not getting inhibited in its function, but yeah. it's getting encouraged yeah. through circulation. So it's kind of developing the vital function almost of an ability to feel your own vitality, these kind of practices, liveness as a, as a being, as a, as a yes. physical... It, yeah, and, and, and it, it helps us to get more detail in our attention, that, and from that, that's how we can refine our patterns of movement. So it's informing our motor patterns. Uh, we work a lot with postural balance, you know, it's sort of like, what's my um, readiness state? <laughs> What's, you know, not like, oh, yeah, I have to be here now, but how, it, and readiness state is a way to be present, but we don't have to pump it up as much as we have to kind of have tools for allowing the, in a way, what I would say, relaxation of our, relaxation of our thinking, so our physical presence is, is involved with our thinking yeah. process, you right. know? And a lot of the movement patterns, or I'm actually, correct me, I'm part of this, but a lot of the movement patterns that you that we repeat through the active breath with mm -hmm. this with these focus and this understanding of the breath mm -hmm. and the integration of the mm -hmm. body 
and come from understandings of developmental movement, how... Yes, it's a very essential coordinations in the body. Yeah. So it, they are deceptively simple mm -hmm. because they are essential. Mm -hmm. And we all have our developmental map, so to speak, of yeah. how we developed. And we have, you know, a ways, I mean, the characteristic of our, of how we, um, our postural balance, yeah. not the correct one, but who we are. Yeah. So, you know, and I see that as a beauty of like, you know, how you move is different from how I move. So within that is a, a developmental baseline of what what your physical intelligence have been and what your interests have been. And so, it, but, but it's the baseline. And so our coordination, we all have blind spots and we all have things that we repeat and things that just haven't come into the picture. Right. So it's just looking at relationship between spine and periphery and body halves, so right side, left side, cross patterns, upper and lower. But you know, it just evolved really through the fun of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and to bring in, you know, going from that slow to something that gets more and more rhythmic. You know, that brings from breath, brings the bridge from breath into sound as a physical instrument um, and becomes more rigorous and something that is like moving in the space. Yeah. You know, um, and of course the other thing is, you know, we learn an essential active breath, but then each time we change our focus in terms of a body system, yeah. we, we, um, we modulate that active breath. Yeah. Um, so organs are different from nervous system, are different from working with the neuromuscular system. So you have this uh, kind of like genre of working yeah. and um, within the active breath. And, but then you have ways to bring your, you know, to, um, to cultivate your perception yeah. so that each layer in the body, yeah. you know, becomes more uh, available. And what's also important is you feel that you're not trying to correct the form, but you're trying to inform the form. Yeah. Mm. And that's an ongoing yeah. Yeah. arrival of meeting yeah. yourself and what's happening at that yes. moment with yourself. Within the training. I mean, when we talk about vocal dance or experiential composition, working from solo to an ensemble, you know, it's, it's not like, oh, what am I in here all by myself? It's like, what's the material? What's getting developed? So, yeah. objectively, having images, having text, yeah. having um, visual, having narratives, you know. So, thematically, you, you, you can meet material, yeah. right? You can meet material on, on, on a different level. Yeah. And I hope it's, you know, it creates a, a, a more... Um, aware performer, yeah. someone who has, you know, has enriched their capacity to focus, but also has enriched their capacity to observe, define, choose, and, um, and compositionally yeah. stay very active. Yeah. Mm. I think I was going to ask you a summarizing question, but I think in those last words, what mm. you said, really for me brings together what this is this interview's kind of been about and what we've been really trying to understand. And for me it really helps to think again about what it is that I'm doing now in the school and, and also with you and the kind of practices that I'm getting in touch with yeah. in order to yeah. arrive at this moment of communication. Yeah. With myself, with other others. With and others friends. and the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. because otherwise <laughs> I don't know. Otherwise, otherwise, we'll leave it at that. Well, you know, I think, you know, the, the training that you're doing at the phys, uh, at the mind school. You know, I can see how much you, it's also enriched you. Yeah. You know, so being eclectic is, you know, and having influences, mm -hmm. you know, give you a chance to create your, a sensibility that's Michael's. Yeah. You know, and that's... Michael's not in this. You know. Uh, Michael's in the sense of how you contribute and how you can articulate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you. It's much longer. <laughs> <laughs>